Yeah, I think it's it's very simple to me. Number one centers around what Portland does. Yeah. The Beal and or the Dame saga, right? Everyone has their eyes on that. Everyone wants to know, okay, are they gonna trade Damian Lillard if they take the number three overall pick? Like the Miami Heat were reluctant to trade for Bradley Beal because they think that they could still get Damian Lillard, and I think Damian Lillard is a much better player than Bradley Beal. He's a much clutch, much clutcher, much more clutch player than da- uh, da- uh, Bradley Beal. Damian Lillard was second team All NBA this year. Yeah, he's been a multiple time All Star. Bradley Beal is kind of like an up and down All Star. Hasn't been playing in many games. Damian Lillard usually plays in eighty percent of the games, and Bradley Beal does not. Right, so. I don't know that anybody really knows what Charlotte's going to do. And I think that that kind of impacts what Portland's going to do. So that to me is very interesting. So the Hornets seem torn, and that means that Portland's not going to know really what value that the number three pick has until they know what Charlotte's going to do because no one's going to trade for that three pick either, right, until draft night. So if they go with Miller, and that's about 50-50 between mock drafters right now, then the Blazers have to make a choice, right? They need to either move a very valuable number three pick, which is a player that would probably go number one in every other draft except for this one, to bring in, or they need to to win now with Damian Lillard, as he says that we should. He says at the Portland, hey, I've been loyal to you. You need to surround me with talent. Mm -hmm. And that all depends on what they can get for number three, right? And I don't know that they're going to get a King's Ransom for number three. There's all these teams that say they want to move up. And at the end of the day, will they move up? I don't I don't know. Or the question is, does Portland bring in Scoot and then have to trade Dame as a result? That's a massive storyline. Damian Lillard anywhere else but Portland changes the entire NBA landscape because he's only going to want to go to a contender. So does that mean that Damian Lillard goes to Miami for a bunch of picks Ooh. and maybe Tyler Hero or maybe not Tyler Hero or maybe they flip Tyler Hero? That's insane. That would make Miami the very heavy betting favorite in the East at least, right? And that would make this lineup look like this for the Portland. You would have Nurkic, Jeremy Grant, Thibel, Sharp, and Scoot with Anthony Simons, Cam Reddish, Keon Johnson off the bench. That's probably the most athletic team in the NBA, I think. A team that has a really bright future. Yeah. Uh, A team that's no longer in and out. You know, yeah. one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. At that point, they're a couple of pieces away, and they probably have four first-round picks or three first-round picks from Miami, and maybe they trade Tyler Hero for two more. So maybe they're a team that's like the OKC Thunder. Maybe they're a team that's closer to being Memphis. You know, when Memphis ended up trading uh, Mike Conley and uh, Marc Gasol in order to be, get John Morant and a bunch of new pieces, right? So all of those guys could be... You know, Sharp and Scoot could easily be all NBA by oh, 24. Yeah. I would love that combo. And then Miami's starting lineup would be Bam, Struess, Butler, Duncan Robinson, and Dame, with potentially Gabe Vincent, Caleb Martin, Oladipo, and Haywood Highsmith off the bench. That's a team that would be a monster. Uh, that team could tear up the East very, very fast. Um, Dame probably gives you that solid fourth quarter scoring that they haven't had in Miami for a very long time. Yeah, you have Jimmy Butler, but Jimmy Butler and Dame at Dame time? Like, I don't know who ends up beating them. I think that they win the title then at that point, right? I'd bet them immediately. I would bet them immediately as well. Yeah. So I would say this, from a betting perspective, if, because I don't think Portland's going to trade Dame right away. I've talked to people who say that. But if you think that they could trade Dame by the deadline, as soon as they pick number three, if Portland takes that selection, bet the Miami Heat immediately to win the title. That's what you should do. It's very interesting. Zion. The Zion trade is now something that's looming. Yeah. Bill Simmons, Ian Begley, others are hinting that Zion hates the New Orleans Pelicans, does not want to be in New Orleans generally. Simmons says that he would bet his career on the fact that Zion will not be a Pelican by Friday. Keep in mind, he also had Kevin Young to be the head coach of the Phoenix Suns, so he's not batting a 1,000. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> if Bill Simmons is right and Zion is traded, that would be a very seismic shift in the NBA. Yeah, is he was that, right about the zombie heat not yeah, being he, a tough out. He was. Yeah. He was right about the zombie heat beating the Boston Celtics, yeah. especially if Zion ends up in New York, which would be his preferred destination most likely, right? The rumors are that the trade would be as follows. Julius Randle, Obi Toppin, plus some first-rounders, and the Knicks obviously have a lot of them for Zion, which would make that starting lineup Mitchell Robinson, Zion, R.J. Barrett, Josh Hart, 
and Jalen Brunson with Emmanuel quickly and Grimes off the bench, that would be a squad. Yeah. You would bet the Knicks win total. You would probably bet them to immediately go to the playoffs. You would bet them in series prices as well once the playoffs come. That has a potential to really mess up the East. That has a, especially if no Dame comes to Miami, yeah. there's really no clear cut favorite in the East right now. As we saw with Miami doing Miami things, what happens with them? So if Zion comes to New York and he's healthy, which Tom Thibodeau is the perfect coach for Zion, he's a guy who's going to run him like a thoroughbred, run him ragged, and get Zion back in shape. Wouldn't that scare you a little bit, though? Just because that like helps Zion, him. okay, yeah, but he doesn't play enough defense. I feel like Tibbs may off him like. Well, and I think that I think <laughs> that know? would really help Zion too. Is that yeah. is that Tibbs doesn't play no games? True. Yeah, and it isn't like you have to be like a lockdown defender at the four. Like Carlos Boozer was getting 30-plus minutes, but he wasn't playing at the end of those games. You know, that's when you'd see a guy like Taj Gibson. That'd be totally. my only concern. You They'd know? have to get somebody else yeah. to come in for the Zion, you know, off Zion minutes. Yeah. But he's averaging 26, 8, and 4 in the 41 games that he's played against Eastern Conference teams. And that would – there's not a lot of great defenders to be able to stop him either. So the Pelicans would get better too. Yeah. Brandon Ingram and Julius uh, Julius Randle have already played together. I was going to say they'd be back together. Yeah, they played. That, yeah, they played together the on Lakers. two teams. They yeah. played for the Lakers and the Pelicans. I together. always forget about the Pelicans run. I do remember the Lakers run because I remember like I was covering the Bucks that year and I was so excited. I thought I was finally going to get to cover and watch LeBron live, and then he sat out. And everybody sat out. It was like Lonzo on that team. Nobody yeah. played that year. Yeah, I'll never forget. Yeah, that was fun. And Julius Randle kind of reinvigorated his career in New Orleans. He loves playing with Brandon Ingram. You add Herb Jones to that, Valanchunas to that, CJ McCollum to that, Jose Alvarado, maybe another step for Dyson Daniels. Maybe you want to place a bet now Trey Murphy. on Trey Murphy. Yeah. Uh, and like Julius Randle's been largely healthy recently. Yeah. So maybe you want to place a, a bet on the Pelicans to go over their win total. Maybe you want. I think that changes the league quite a bit as well. Oh, yeah. This one's sneaky. What does Golden State do? Zach Levine to Golden State would be a massive seismic shift to the NBA. I agree. The rumors are starting uh, already that Golden State wants to do something with their new GM, Mike Dunleavy and Kent Lacob. They want to make a big splash. The, the Suns have moved on uh, from, from Chris Paul. The Beal trade's not going to happen. The Nuggets dog walk the West on their way to the chip. Draymond's opting out. What are you going to do? You've got Steph, Clay, Dre. It doesn't look as formidable as it once did, right? So what do you do? You're looking at the news, and looks like the Chicago Bulls are entertaining offers to try to get younger and try to get off of that albatross contract that is Zach Levine. He's on the trade block. So maybe, you know, Levine makes $37 million next year. Jordan Poole makes 27.5. Oh, damn you. You throw in some salary filler, throw in a 25 26 first rounder, and now you shake up the West by it being Steph Curry, Zach Levine, Clay Thompson. Maybe you bring back Draymond, and now you've got another good decision making scorer, better than Jordan Poole. And now you've got some real problems in the West. That would be a league shaking trade, even if it doesn't do a lot because Zach Levine doesn't stay healthy and he's got knee issues, at least on the front end, that moves prices for everything, right? Uh, it gets the toxicity out of Golden State. No more Jordan Poole, Draymond drama. Yeah, The t- team's never going to move on until that black cloud is gone. It gives the Bulls a bunch of youth. It has uh, future assets. Poole is a 20-point game uh, scorer. He's always healthy as a number two behind DeRozan. That really changes things. I bet he becomes a 25-point a game scorer with DeRozan and him being the second like scorer on that team. And now Golden State has a lineup of Looney, Dre, Levine, Clay, and Steph. That's probably the most potent scoring uh, starting five in basketball, including against the Phoenix Suns. And now the Bulls look like this. Vooch, Patrick Williams, DeRozan, Poole, and Caruso with Io. Derek June, Jerry Jones, Dalen Terry, and uh, Jones off the bench. That team is not worse uh, than the Levine look Bulls. I think both teams would be a lot better off, and I think that changes the NBA significantly. 